Well, hello, I'm Stuart, uh, and I'm going to talk to you today about uh, sound. I've uh, been interested in sound for a while. Uh, it's, a, it's funny hearing yourself amplified in the room. Um, I studied it at university, and um, over the past, ooh, probably about 10 months, I've been working on this project, and I sort of wanted to talk to you about that, uh, and the thoughts I've had, and the sort of things I've, that have come up whilst I've been doing it. It's a bit longer than 60 seconds, this project. So, 60 seconds of tech. And, um, all right, I'll start again. So sound, going to tell you a bit about this project, but it's called 60 Seconds. Um, and one thing that I'm really interested in is um, sharing stuff. The web's really social. People upload all sorts of things. You're writing blog posts all the time, or putting up pictures to Flickr, or telling people what you think about who's talking, or telling what you think about X Factor, or all this stuff. And it's really fascinating how the web is there's become this social thing, you know, web 2.0, yeah, social media, wicked. Um, and I'm really fascinated in using sound as a way of sharing experience, uh, rather a bit like um, uploading short sound clips, uh, a bit like photos. Um, I went on holiday this year to Berlin and took my digital camera and had my phone. And when I got back, I realised I'd actually taken more sound recordings. I got this app a year ago, something like that. Um, you get it for your iPhone. Um, you used to be able to get it for Android devices. Then they had a load of uh, tech problems with it and pulled it. Um, and then that's sort of gone a bit quiet on that front. Um, and AudioBoo is uh, a way... It allows you to record sound, um, add photos to the sound clip, add uh, tags to the sound clip and upload it. Um, you can also use a web interface, so you don't need a smartphone. You can have a, a, an actual computer and upload sounds. Um, and I, I got it, and I was like, well, this is sort of interesting, but I mean, I don't really know what to do with it. Uh, and I've read an interview online recently with uh, the CEO of Audio Boo, this guy called Mark Rock, and he said that um, when his, his mother passed away, and when... when she passed away, he realised he didn't have any uh, audible um, memories of her. He didn't have any sound recordings of her voice or her laugh. Um, and so this spurred him to make Audio Boo, um, sort of giving people an easy way of recording stuff and archiving it online. Um, so this is a screenshot of what you get once you've uploaded um, a, a boo, is what they call it, or a sound clip. Uh, and it does it at fairly decent quality. Um, it's compressed to an MP3, so it's not for your audio files, or you know, it's not for your sort of specialist sound recordists. They sort of they get a bit too far involved with it, as far as I'm concerned. Um, the big thing for me is like convenience uh, over the quality. So for my purposes, I was using um, this to just record things I found interesting, and the fact that I've got my phone in my pocket most of the time meant that I could record a lot of sounds. Because I was like, oh, that's, that sounds wicked. Have you heard that? Right, I'll go and record that. And it's sort of similar I, to when I got my um, Nokia N95. It was the first phone that took decent digital pictures. Uh, and as a result, I found myself taking lots more photographs because I had this thing in my pocket all the time. I didn't have to remember it. I didn't have to have a rucksack or a big pocket with a digital camera in it. Um, and so, yeah, this whole thing about convenience and you've got a, a device on you which you can use to put content up online... Um, and the, the thing that fascinated me most about audio booze, you can see here you've got the, the title, the tags, the embedded player, uh, a photograph, and then well, it's got chopped off a bit at the bottom, but it's uh, a map. Uh, and what audio boo does is it automatically geotags your sound recording. And this, this is great. I didn't even have to do it. It does it automatically. And uh, that sort of adds, for me, I think, it adds a new value to the sound clip. So you've got this sound recording, and when I've done it before, I've had this big sound recorder go out, and then I've ended up with loads of files with weird names and numbers on my hard drive. And then you go through all of those files, and you edit them, and it blah, blah, takes ages. Um, but with this sort of way of recording sound, you've, you've got it located on a map. Um, similar way, I open up iPhoto now, and I can look at dates. So I can browse my photos by a date. Um, but also, I can open up a map, and then I can see all of the content I've taken or produced on, on a map. And it's like, oh, that's really interesting. You see where I've been. Oh, oh, I remember being there. And you zoom in and you can see where, you, where you've been and where you've taken photos. And it gives it a sort of really nice, sort of, uh, not dimension, it's a bit too far, but it's a really nice way of categorising your data and looking at it. So I was like, okay, I've got this thing, an audio boo, I should probably do something with it. So I started recording sound. And that's where this whole 60 second project came from. Um, 
I chose 60 seconds. It sort of gave me a bit of a format to work with. Um, there's a, a limit to five minutes, I think, you can do with audio boot. But what I really wanted to do is, if I capture 60 seconds, I press record, and I'm not really in control of what happens for that 60 seconds until I press stop. So you get some really quite nice random sounds going in. I mean, I go in to cafes, bars, and take the ambience of what's going on there, or uh, the noises that happen in a, in a streetscape. Um, or go, I went to a shop to get some keys cut, and it was a really quite nice sound that was coming from the machine. So I was like, right, I'll just record that and grab it. Um, and it, audio boom made it quick and easy. Uh, so I started this about 10 months ago, sort of uh, early on in this year. Um, and then I was like, yeah, I've got plans to put it on a map, and I'll, I'll, I'll document it and all this, blah, blah, blah. And then I found out about this other thing called the UK Sound Map, which um, it's done by the British Library. Uh, and another thing, Noise Futures Network, they sort of collaborated on the project. Um, and it was great. This is, a, this is a map that someone else has made that I can put my content on. It's like, okay, convenience again. <laughs> Tick, cool. Um, they trialled it in Sheffield uh, for about a month, just as an experiment to see if they get people contributing sounds to this map. Um, and then it went UK-wide in, in July. I can see that, yeah. Um, and they got coverage on the BBC website. The, the British Library have got a blog about it. Um, it's funny, the web's, the web's really good for people to whinge on. Uh, you've got this blog post and you know, someone's introducing this project and they're telling people about it and they put it all up and then first comment, oh, I don't think that's any good. Oh no, you've got all these people. What, you, what you're trusting people with mobile phones to make sound recordings and archive it online and all this sort of like, negative stuff and they're like, yeah, I think it's uh, something that Usman said before, sort of like the data made public, public making data. And I think one of the really nice things about this UK sound map is they're encouraging Joe Public to upload the content and it's, there's a few sort of directions as to what sort of stuff you should be uploading onto there. But really you've got a bit of free range. And I think it's really interesting because as well as getting, you're getting audio uploaded to this map, it's what people choose to record, which is quite interesting. So let's have a bit of a look at the map. Um, so the red dots on here are the individual booze. So you can see it's quite spread all over the UK. Um, and I started adding my sound recordings to this map. Uh, and then I thought I'd get in touch with um, this guy called Ian Rawls. Mm, that's better. Uh, Ian Rawls, who's the editor of the UK sound map at the British Library. And I sort of sent him an email. I said, you know, this is a really interesting project. Why did you start it up? What, what was your driving force? And can I have some stats? And you, I've been speaking to him earlier in the year. And you had to come and do a talk about it. And I was like, well, most decent talks have got a graph or two in it. So I got some stats in it, like make it a bit scientific or something. Um, so I was like, right, give me some stats. So this is the first one. Um, maybe not a massive surprise that most of the recordings that are uploaded are from mobile devices. I mean, primarily it's an app for your smartphone, pretty much for the iPhone. But um, it's interesting that there's other people using other devices to upload it as well. So people are using the web interface. Um, and one of the interesting things that uh, Ian said was someone even used an ultrasonic bat recorder to get the sound of some bats somewhere. So you use a real sort of mix, real sort of real variety of stuff going on onto this sound map. Um, here we can see uh, all the, the sort of categories of different places where these sound recordings have come from. And, well, again, not a huge surprise in that pretty much three quarters of these sound recordings have come from the urban environment or towns. I mean... You could sort of look at that as, does that reflect on most people that own smartphones live in cities and towns? Or maybe we spend less time in the countryside than we should do? Um, so, I mean, there's, the, the sound map has got to be taken as not 100% scientific, really. There's a lot of uh, uh, bias or, or skewed data in there. But it is quite interesting that the stuff from the seaside, you know, people recording the sounds of waves, for example, um, and there is stuff coming from the countryside as well. So it is coming from a lot of different places. Um, and he sent me all these different stats as well. And I sort of sat in front of this email trying to work out which ones I should show. And so I was like, well, I'll just go for the first two and then we'll talk about the rest. And it's quite interesting. The, the data itself is interesting. But what interested me more is sort of how it's processed, um, which is it's all done by hand. And audio content itself is fairly hard to analyze automatically. Um, people have been building algorithms and sort of different ways to analyze sound uh, and we've had uh, speech to text recognition around for a while but as soon as you get a, a sound clip 
that's quite busy, lots of stuff going on in it. It's really hard to analyse. So Ian, poor chap, he has to go through all this stuff and moderate it and sort of approve it, but he has to sort of get all of the categories out of it. And he sent me sort of statistics about can hear person's voice in recording or can hear sort of voices that aren't the person who's recorded it in the recording and blah, blah, all this stuff. And it must take ages. Um, and it, what fascinates me is that you can't scrape the data as easily from an audio upload that as you can for, from text or sort of you know, hard content. So, for example, if you say, take two things, you've got a written blog post uh, that you might have typed up an interview or and you've got the, the recorded interview, if you upload the audio file, it won't be as easily indexed by Google or other search engines uh, on the web. Google doesn't have its own sound search thing yet. I spent quite a while looking for that yesterday. Couldn't find anything. Um, so I, I was like, okay, so, but what is the value of this then? Why, why upload sound? I mean, who, who cares? Um, I never thought, thought about this for a while. And it's like, well, a number of points, really. Um, and sort of going back to the thing about Mark Rock, we're creatures of memory. We like remembering nice things. That's why we have photo albums. That's why we like showing, oh, I did this, look, I was on the beach, look, sunny. Or like, you, you look back at photos of years gone by and it's, it's remembrance, it's nice, it's nice to remember things. And I think audio is quite a nice way to remember things too. It's different to a picture uh, and it's different to video. Um, what I'd really like is if you could recreate smells. How powerful is that for evoking memory? Really good, but we're not quite there yet, so I'll talk about sound instead. <laughs> So is this back to this little sharing experience thing, right? You know, you, you couldn't, you, I, it's quite a, new, uh, a nice thing. I, I got a, I recorded the sound of the U-Bahn metro system in Berlin. And um, Audioboo links to Twitter, so it automatically went up when I uploaded it. And then I got sort of a, a tweet back from my friend, uh, Anna, she, uh, who originally from Berlin, now lives in Cardiff. And she, it brought back the memories for her of being on that metro system, so that quite a, rememberable sound. So, uh, yeah, that was quite nice to see that connection. Um, but as well as that, I think it's uh, good for re recording places in a sort of uh, archive or historical way. So, I mean, imagine what Leeds sounded like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 50 years ago. Well, what were the sounds that were going on? And it's quite easy, I think, to not really pay much attention to sound every day. You know, a lot of people walk around with, with earphones in. Oh, that's really weird, yeah. Um, and, but if you stop to listen, um, there's actually quite a lot of sound going on around us. And I think it would have been quite different a while ago. So if this UK sound map is going all right and they back it up and they make it accessible so people in 10 years can come back and hear the sounds that they've recorded, um, will it be interesting? Will it be of any historical value? I don't know, but I think it's quite interesting. Um, another good thing I think about uh, audio is that you can upload it quickly. Uh, I saw a video of uh, Christian Payne who goes under the uh, handle um, documentally. Sound guy, social media fanatic. Um, so he uses all these tools. But what really struck me in his, his presentation was he said that um, Audioboo was the single most important app that he had come across. Um, and he's done journalistic stuff. Before. And so I, I thought quite like the example of if you're out in the field, or I mean you don't have to be a reporter, maybe you could be a regular person, if you're out and you see something that might be newsworthy or might be of interest to other people, is it not quicker to get your phone out, press record, say what you've got to say, stop and then upload it, which automatically then gets spread to your other social networks, than have to fiddle around with a touchy type screen keyboard and do spelling mistakes and... I think that it's just quite a nice interface and quite a nice way of getting stuff up quickly if you need to and if you're out and about. Um, I think the cons come along with that a little bit, though. I mean, we're always so hasty to get stuff up quickly. <laughs> uh, I used to use Foursquare a bit, and I got to the point where it uh, started to annoy me when I couldn't check in places. You know, impatience, like, oh, I need to check in. Um, and I think that's a bit of a problem with this sort of new tech stuff, is that you can be a bit hasty and then find yourself getting into trouble. Um, I was on a, a, a project recently, I'm not going to say much about it, but uh, someone was having a bit of a 
strop about something. I thought it was really funny. He the things he was saying, the stuff he was coming, stomping around the room. So I recorded it. And so I just... <laughs> <laughs> Needless to... Well, <laughs> it went up to Twitter, because I was like, well, I'll just post it up. Didn't, no, didn't tag it, didn't, nothing. Just, you know, whatever his name was, rant. I uploaded it. Um, and it just so happened that the person he was ranting about was following all of our other stuff online. Um, my previous post had been a blog post about something, and it linked, and then it was narrowly... Uh, <laughs> it was, well, it was quite close to losing some funding, we'll just say that. So, <laughs> you've got to be careful with this sort of stuff. <laughs> but it was, it, it, was, it was good in a way that it's the first thing to come back and sort of give me a bit of a slap around the face. It's like, be careful. You know, be careful what you upload. Um, but I would say, have a, check out Audioboo. Have a look on it. I think it's audioboo.fm. Uh, and there's all sorts of stuff on there. Um, some people sort of saying, don't know what this is, do you? And that's it. Another guy, uh, what was it, I found something. He was singing the praises of a local car wash and saying how impressed he was that the guy had reached in and wiped his bit where his sat-nav usually is. So it's, it's, it's ace. I mean, some people use it uh, really trying to push a certain product. Some people use it for reviews. Um, some people, you know, I, I don't really like hearing the sound of my voice played back. Have you ever heard that when you've done a recording and you listen? It's like, oh my God, what's that? So I don't really speak when I do. I just like to record the sounds. Um, but it's ace. Um, and the sort of the thing I wanted to, to finish on really was this, um, it's not really got a name yet, so we just came up with Automatic Boo Bot. Um, I've got a friend called Ollie Wood who goes under the handle or Twitter name Cold Climate. Um, and he's pretty good at scripting stuff, better than me. Um, and... I approached him and said, well, what if we could make a computer that automatically uploads stuff to Audioboo? I mean, it's easy enough as it is. I could just press a few things and do it. But I'm really interested in this idea of making, setting up a computer and leaving it somewhere. Um, we've got a prototype working now, which it runs a script. And it will automatically record 60 seconds of audio at a determined time interval. So we've gone for probably once an hour through the day. Um, and if you leave it in one location, you end up you build up this database of audio. Uh, and although it's quite difficult to process and get categories and get data out of it, I think it'd be quite an interesting process to see uh, how the sound recording changes through a day or over a week or over a month. So, for example, if you put it in quite a rural area or a boundary between a rural area and a, a sort of urban area. If you can see the difference in the sound recordings over a longer period of time and see if you've got um, louder points in louder months than others, or if you've got more uh, bird song of a particular type um, at one period of the year than another, and if that changes over a number of years. Um, and I think that's quite a nice way, again, of sort of using this audio boot app that's being built and people do what they want with it. Uh, and, and automating it to a certain extent where you, I mean, you just need a power connection and a web connection. Um, you can, we've set it up to automatically do everything else. We've got a prototype working. Now we just need to find some interesting places to put it. Um, so if anyone's got an interesting place they'd like some automatic sound recording going on, come and find me later, because um, that's the sort of next thing we want to do with it. Um, and that's pretty much it, really. So, the, yeah, I just wanted to touch back on that thing that Usman said about the um, making data public, or the public making data. And I think any of us in this room is in a position where we can put stuff up on the web, and it's sort of thinking about making it appealing to other people. Don't tell people you've just had a bit of toast. Don't really care. Um, but you could maybe record the sound of your toast toasting. I mean, that may, is that more interesting? Or record the sound um, of, of something that, that grabs you. And, it, and if it grabs you enough, uh, and you can share that with other people, then I think that's incredibly empowering. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>